when did my journey begin from doing digital art for work to doing mostly traditional uh, mediums for professional work? Well, it started about eight years ago. I was living in Seattle. We had just moved there and um, outside of Michael's, that's the only kind of art store or craft store I was exposed to for most of my life up until that point. There was a uh, Dick Blix off of Broadway in Seattle that had all sorts of art, uh, art supplies, just everything you could imagine. That was essentially the first time I actually saw it and of course I didn't have a ton of money but seeing all of those things made me really want to start getting into doing traditional work. First I just dappled with it, bought a few pieces of a, uh, you know, paint and um, colored pencils and markers. I started with a couple of Copic markers because they were about seven dollars a piece and then I had gotten three colors and once I did three I'm like, you know what, I want some colors in between. And I'm also uh, obsessed with gradient gradients and creating like a perfect gradient with whatever I had, whether it was Photoshop at the time. You know, when I was in high school, I was using markers and colored pencils to create my pieces and the gradients. I would overlay marker over the colored pencils to kind of smooth it out and I'd use my finger or um, like a napkin or something just to smooth everything out. And, you know, it seemed really cool at the time. And now that I'm kind of more exposed to the art supplies that they had at Blix, I wanted more for my work. I wanted more color. I wanted more gradations and just more texture and more life. And you know, bit by bit, I started to buy more and more. And then uh, I had a friend that came over. And at this time, I was just kind of experimenting still. And I was working on a book, my own creator own project uh, called Lola XOXO. And, you know, I, I started inking and penciling on paper you know, like the, the bristle 11 by 17 comic art boards. And I was going to color it with Photoshop. But my friend came over and on my drafting table, there was a piece I did on a craft paper with some ink and white colored pencils and a tiny bit of a Copic marker here and there. It was kind of a tonal like gray and, and brown. And he thought it was the coolest thing in the world. And I think I said, yeah, you know, I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to do my comic. I mean, I'm thinking maybe part of it was going to be with some traditional mediums like ink wash. But then he's like, oh, that'd be kind of cool if all of it was traditional because he was way more impressed with that than the Photoshop. And I thought, you know what? Hey, I should probably try it out. See how this works. See if this was possible. So for the next year or so, I just kept adding more and more colors to my arsenal and different types of mediums. I was experimenting with oil and watercolor, but mainly acrylics, but also um, Copic markers. This was also around the time that Emerald City Comic Con came to Seattle and uh, I made my first appearance there with Aspen Comics as an artist. So by that time I've already bought maybe 10 Copic markers and I started doing some commissions uh, for fans and customers at the booth with markers and some of it was colored and some of it was inked but I started to get really comfortable with it and uh, I was getting a lot of commissions and I started to get more confident using these mediums and this was still around the time that I was trying to figure out how to color traditionally for my comic book. During this time I uh, basically got commissions to do some Marvel Comics covers, uh, variant covers, and I was starting to use the markers and some watercolor and I was starting to mix everything up a little bit and I became very comfortable so um, that was my go-to and I, I started getting known for using the Copics to do the covers and of course every time I uh, made money off of some of my work I actually bought more art supplies and it didn't hurt <laughs> that there was a Blix basically within walking distance so every day I'd show up and I mean, people started to recognize me because, I mean, I'm there all the time buying new supplies and experimenting. It got to a point where I had to slow down and almost, so, and I was like, okay, well, either I learn how to use all these or I give them away or something because there's no way I'm just going to throw it away or there's no, I didn't have a, a big apartment, so there's nowhere to store everything. But, you know, that that started the journey to do everything traditionally with Lola XOXO outside of the graphic design and the lettering 
all the interior art, whether it be pencils, inking, and coloring was all done with markers, and that was it. That set me on a path, and 18 issues later, that's basically how I did the book. And, you know, it wasn't enough just to color the books in t with the interior art with markers. I wanted to get really good at creating a contrast with just black and white ink or just uh, ink with negative space. And so I started to buy more inks than I did colors because I love the contrast that you could get with ink. Whereas with uh, markers, you can get that, but then you're carrying all these colors around and it was just too cumbersome if I traveled a lot. So I started to experiment with different types of inks, brushes, pens and paper, anything I could do just to get the contrast I wanted without having to add color. So, you know, I spent another four, maybe five years doing that. And this last year I did, I was determined to basically focus only on the black and white line art and get really good at that. And now I feel like I have quite the arsenal for stuff that I could create black and white art with. And, um, I'm more comfortable now doing that than I was maybe even a year ago because it was a really hard push to try to get the art to look the way I wanted it to. And now if I wanted to slap on some marker or watercolor, it's like basically an accent more than the focal point of the pieces. And so I get my contrast with the inks and then I could add the watercolors in. It saves a lot of time and it also gets me to where I want to get quicker because the art is already um, there's already a lot of contrast with the art without having to try to add all these extra colors which takes up more time than ink does so I get the contrast I want quicker making my deadlines a lot easier um, and you know I could focus more on the composition and the storytelling aspect of it and the textures being created with all the ink that I'm using right now and I know that using traditional mediums is a little bit more time consuming or a lot and a lot of the commercial work, you know, you need to turn in concepts and, and work right away. So it was important for me to um, be able to do that, do it enough where it wasn't, it didn't matter that I was using ink and watercolor. It, I was still going to be able to turn the same amount of work in without having to worry about not meeting my deadlines. Granted, I still do digital work for commercial work like concepts and, and comics if I need to turn it in really fast but overall if I've given enough time just a little bit more time I could turn in the work I want to create the work that I want to create using my hands and the paper and the pencil and that's what I prefer and enjoy doing more. With all that being said I think the most important part of this whole journey is to understand that whatever gets you to create often and to enjoy it more, I say go for it, whether it be paper and pencil or a tablet and a computer, you know, or, or just or clay and, and just anything. Anything to get you to create, I think, is worth doing and worth doing all the time. <laughs>